guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Carroll County Cake Swamp. It's by Jealous Cat. It plays two to six players, takes about 10 to 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages eight and up. In the game Carroll County Cake Swamp, you're going to be basically swapping cakes. And how that works is you're going to get a character here. It's going to have a, basically a hole in the plate and you're going to be trying to gather cakes. And there's a big stack of cards. It's going to have these different cakes that have different frosting. They're going to have different uh, layers of colors of chocolate and vanilla and whatnot. And you're basically going to be trying to stack as many cakes as you can based on certain requirements. Maybe you want a prestigious cake where it's going to have all the same type of uh, the cake uh, not frosting, but the, the cake breaded portion, or maybe you want the different types of frosting. Maybe you just want an honorable cake. And there's different types as well. Three layer, four layer, five layer, and you're gonna be scoring points. And up to a certain point, after you've scored enough of these, you can win the game. The person with the most points at the end, or written to a certain amount of points at the end of the game is going to win the Carroll County Cake Swap. Let's go ahead and show you down below what the game looks like, what it comes with, and then we'll show you how to play. So here we have the Carroll County Cake Swap, and it's all set up, and you can play from two to six players. Doesn't matter how many play it's just going to give you a singular character here and three of the abilities there's going to be squeeze there's going to be swipe and there's going to be swap each of them do different things swap is going to let you swap one cake with another swipe will let you steal one from your opponent and squeeze lets you fit a cake that you normally wouldn't be able to fit in between two layers of cake there's honorable premium prestigious gold standard signature and showcase types of cakes and they all are going to require a certain type of cake in order to score their ribbons each ribbon will be based on whether it's a three four or five layer cake as you can see three four and five and then it gives you that specific ribbon you can only take one and after that it's gone and uh, you're going to be scoring points based on that ribbon so for instance if you had a prestigious cake that had five layers you're going to get 10 points when you basically trade off that cake. You put the cake over here, you gain the ribbon. Depending on the number of players in the game is how many points you're gonna need in order to win. And in this case, in a two player game, it'd be 31 points. Whereas in a six player game, it would be 21 points. The first player who gets that amount of points, that turn is going to end and that player is simply going to win. But how they get there will be the challenge. And they're gonna be trying to gather all the different ribbons from all of these different cakes as they attempt to swap some cakes. On your turn, it's pretty simple. You're going to get a pool of different types of cakes that you can go ahead and draw from, or you're going to be able to draw from the top of the deck here and decide whether you want to put it on your cake or not, and then you're going to pass. You can, of course, use your abilities, but you have a certain amount of times which you can use them, and uh, you're going to discard your cakes and gather these specific ribbons as long as you meet the requirements. First person to the points that they need is the winner of the Carroll County Cake Swap. Let's go ahead and take it down below now, and I will show you how to play a couple rounds and what all the abilities do. This is a two player example of Carroll County Cake Swap and we've got the two players here and they're all going to start with somebody holding a cake pan as well as one of each of the abilities that you can use once per game and I'll explain how they work in a second. These are your player reference cards that have a front and a back that explain the actions as well as what you can do on your turn and uh, that is pretty much all you need to begin. Every player is going to draw a card from the top of the deck and the player who got the highest number of uh, uh, the highest cake, I guess, this would be a five and this would be a three, is going to go first. So in this case, she's going to go ahead and go first. Then they're going to take these and place them into the middle where they can be drawn from. The first player is going to start, which is her. We're going to go ahead and move the rest of these things off the table because we're not using them in a two-player game. And she's going to get to decide, does she want to draw from the top of this deck here or does she want to take one from the... Uh, the, the area here, in which case this is a pretty good one. It's a large one and it can be placed on her cake pan. Now remember, when you place on your cake pan, you want to make sure that you get a, a large one on the bottom because if you place something like this, then you're not going to be able to place anything on top of it because it goes from the highest number to the lowest number from bottom to top. So in this case, a five would be good because then something like this could be played on top of it, right? So a five and then a three, but you couldn't do something like this. And in fact, it doesn't even look right. If you put a two and then put a five on top, that doesn't work. That is a misplacement. Okay, so she's going to go ahead and take this red one and place it down onto her cake pan, which is really nice. Now she's got a nice large five, five cake. So after that, it's the next player's turn and she's going to go ahead and decide does she want this or this? Not really. They're too small. She wants something bigger because remember the larger cakes will score you more points as you can see on all of these different achievements. So she'll draw this cake and look at it. Does she want this one? Well, it's got a five on there. It's pretty good. And there's also a blue one here that she might be able to take. So yeah, we'll go ahead and take 
take that one. If she didn't want it, she'd simply place it here and allow somebody else to get it, but she wouldn't be able to get a cake this round. So we'll place it there. Back to this player here, go ahead and draw one and look at it. Yeah, that is definitely one she wants. That's gonna go right there. It is the same uh, flavor as well as the same frosting type, which is gonna lead to a really strong cake. This is the showcase cake. And if she can get a five layer cake like that, that's 15 points, which is of course about halfway to her goal, which is 31. Uh, the next player over here is going to go ahead and draw one. Does she want this one? Mm, it's different color frosting, which is okay, because if you look, uh, this is going to be the same flavor, which is going to be chocolate and different colored frosting. So even still, these signature cakes are pretty good. So yeah, she'd probably take that one there. But now remember that she's chose two different frostings. She probably won't want to take this one here. But she could, because she can still get the... Uh, the honorable cakes if she wants, and there's probably some other options as well. Back to her player, to that player's turn, flip over one of these. Mm, that's not the same flavor, nor is it the same frosting type, so we'll probably leave this one here. And now she gets a choice. Now, ooh, same color as for flavor, as well as the different frosting color. So yeah, I'll take that one. She'll go ahead and place that there. Back to her turn again. Okay, that's a four. Now this is an interesting frosting because this is actually wild. All the white ones are wild, so it's of any color. But it's not going to be really useful for her because it is this, this one over here has got a 1 and it's also green. Mm, probably no good. Uh, let's go and talk about what she could do on her turn as far as abilities go. So for instance, swap. Let's say that she didn't like what she was doing here or she wanted to change it up a bit. She could swap. And the way you do that is you turn that to the side. That's a once per game ability. And then she could swap one of her cakes with one from the middle doing this, which in essence just changes the flavor of the cake, but the frosting is wild, so she can choose to keep going red or multicolored frosting. That's how a swap is going to work. As long as it's swap with the kit, one of the kit pieces of cake that you have, that'll work. Swiping is interesting. You could swipe by taking the top layer of somebody else's cake, so if they're starting to do pretty well, maybe you want to avoid them getting a lot of points, you could simply swipe somebody's cake. And then the last one is squeeze. So let's say she had a five and then maybe she had something like this instead of this. And she's like, oh, this came out. Well, I'll squeeze that in. So she'll take this and she'll place it right in between her cake. Very, very useful because that's gonna get her more points. So those are how the three different abilities work. But she drew this one. She's not really happy with this one. So it's now back to this player's turn. Go ahead and draw this. Oh, wait, does she want to draw this? She doesn't want to draw this because she has this right here. A wild frosting and a two. Super, super useful. She's going to go ahead and put that one like that. Just what she wants. Now, does she want to go for that next last one to try and get the uh, multiple frostings, same flavor? That is going to be 13. Or she could actually go ahead and remove this cake here, one, two, three, and four, and she can take this eight points, signature eight. And these cards are going to get discarded. They go over here to show that she's made the cake, and that's going to get her eight points, and now she can build a new cake if she would like to. And then the play would go ahead and pass. This player's going to draw. Maybe she's going to select it. Maybe she won't, but at some point, she's going to have to decide whether she wants to do that or not. So maybe she'll go ahead and put that there. Ugh, it's not, I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, this player here, beautiful. Another big one, different, different, or it's wild frosting, super useful. And she goes, uh-oh, we don't want her to get this one because that's another wild frosting. So maybe, maybe she will actually go ahead and swap this over. And, and, and that's basically how the game's going to function, right? I think you guys get the idea now. Basically making cakes, trying to get as many as you possibly can to satisfy these conditions to score these points. Once you've gained one of the ribbons, they're gone forever. So no longer will the uh, second place signature cakes be available for this player to score or any other player that's currently playing the game. If this player at the end of the game ended up getting that's 20 points and then we got... Uh, 15, which is going to be th 35. That is enough to do 31. That would actually have her win the game, and she would be the winner of the Carroll County Cake Swap. That's pretty much it. I think you guys have the idea of the game. Let's come up, and I'll discuss it with you. So let's go ahead and discuss Carroll County's Cake Swap. Now, first of all, as you guys can see, it's basically a game in which you're trying to stack cakes on top of cakes with the different frostings and different flavors, scoring the best you can. There's the showcase cakes, which are the best, even at the lowest value. And then you've got stuff like the honorable, which are the worst, even at the highest value. One, two, or three points. Any other cake is pretty much better than that, except for the premium, which has a couple uh, smaller ones, I suppose. But you try to do the best you can with what you've got to work with. And you're going to be choosing from either the tableau or, of course, drawing from the deck. The deck's going to be a little bit more random, but sometimes that is the best option for what is available to you. Some interesting things as well, like for instance, when you swipe things or swap certain things, you can actually go ahead and turn it to its side. So if you swipe something from a player who is using this side of the cake, you can actually take and use this side of the cake for your specific cake, which will 
be usually more relevant than the other two actions. They're all one-time uses, but they're very useful when they do occur, and you need to make sure you use them at the exact time you possibly can, because if you choose to use it on a time that's not going to be as beneficial for you, then it's going to cost you. The game actually is pretty competitive as far as how you want to place down your cakes and who's scoring what. Uh, as you can see, the one gal, uh, she was able to score quite a bit of points at the very beginning there, while the other cal girl gal was kind of lagging behind, but that can easily switch, and the momentum kind of changes based on how that works. And of course, using the abilities with more players in the game, that will also stop somebody's flow of gameplay, and it can really mess somebody up as far as scoring points. I really, really enjoyed this game. It was a lot of fun. I like the idea of swapping cakes. I like the idea of the different frostings and the different flavors and how you're trying to maximize your score potential, while other players are kind of messing with you, but they're very limited as to how many times they can do that, all while worrying about their own specific cakes and how when you want to use your specific ability. I like the art for the game. It's fine. I like the different, uh, the different ribbons and how they kind of function, where you can only gain one prize each time. You can't actually go ahead and get the same one over and over again, so it makes you kind of try and make different types of cake, which fits in well with the theme of the game. If you enjoy a theme game like this and you like a little bit of competitive nature, as well as a little bit of management as to how you're placing your cakes up and down and trying to organize how you want your cake to best look to gain the most points, you're going to enjoy this game. Most families are going to like it and kids are going to be easily able to understand this game as well. There's not a whole lot of crazy complexity involved with this, but I think that's for the best in this type of game. Players who probably won't like this game, I imagine are going to be players who want a little bit more in-depth strategy, players who want a lengthier game, players who may or may not like the artwork. Um, but otherwise, I, I have just a lot of positive things to say about it. I had a lot of fun with this. We had we played this with two, three, four, and five players and enjoyed it thoroughly with all the different player counts. It does play a little differently with the more players because more abilities are active throughout the game, but the extent of the time does add a little bit more for each player that you add on to the game because it allows another player to basically be making their own cakes for their own specific turn. You're not going to be taking things and doing things on other players' turns, so there's a little bit of a wait in between. But yeah, anyway, that's the basic idea for the game. I really, really like the uh, functionality of the game. I like the mechanics, and I like the theme of Carroll County Cake Swap. I think that if this game uh, feels like something you'd be interested in, I would definitely suggest checking it out down below on Kickstarter. Cake Swap! I dig it. Or I'll eat it. Yeah, I'd eat it. I'm hungry for cake. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Checking out Carroll County Cake Swap. If you like Cake Swap in action, down below is where you're gonna go. As well as checking our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, picks are listed more. We're giving away a lot of games right now, and I'm featuring uh, a plushie from Five Nights at Freddy's for my cousin because she's got a YouTube channel, which is doing even way better than mine. It's crazy how these kids work with the YouTubes. Anyway, also check out our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, we'll be having a... Uh, Blue Gear Games coming on uh, along with Sandbox Gaming this week and then next week we'll have Ross Thompson with you with Iosayopoli from um, Court of the Dead Mourner's Call, a really cool game and then of course there's Gen Con after that for a panel we'll be doing which will be really fun I'll see you guys at Gen Con if you'll be there and that's all we got as always I look forward to eating a bunch of cake with you next time no, I'm, I'm gonna get some cake now <laughs>